Okay, so now I'm going to walk through a brainstorming example um, of how I would handle the SA2 assignment. So what I've done here is I've um, cut and paste the prompt onto a Word doc so I can brainstorm on this Word doc. And I think it's always a good idea to start your brainstorming with your prompt in mind. So you might put the prompt at the top of the page. So you keep this in mind. This is what we're doing. Um, how does Parable of the Sower reveal the interconnection of two different issues? And why does this matter? And one of the first things that I always recommend when you get a new prompt is to try to put the prompt into your own words. Oh, it says one word. So let's see if I can fix that. All right. So I'm looking at these key ideas, interconnected and issues, because these are the big words I would say in the prompt that I need to make sure I understand. Um, so, and also I'm, it's, I'm being asked how parable of the sh sower reveals something. So I have to show how the, um, how the, the book reveals. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to say the book reveals something. The book, let's say the book shows something. Okay. So the book shows something. It shows how some things are interconnected. So here's some ideas I had about what is interconnected. It's, um, things, how things affect one another, um, how one thing might cause something else. If one thing changes, so does something else. It's about a relationship, right? Interconnected is about a relationship. And then my other term issues. Well, what's an issue? Well, an issue is a problem that's hard to solve. Um, and I think about things like homelessness as an example. Homelessness is not an easy problem to solve. That's why it's an issue that continues to be a problem for us. So issues are complex problems. So now I have rephrased, um, and actually how does the novel show us that, so here's gonna be my version of the prompt. How does the novel show us that one problem that is hard to solve is related to another problem that is hard to solve. So um, this might help me brainstorm because it's the same ideas as the prompt, but I put it into my own words. And that can be a really helpful step. So I, I recommend doing that, especially when you're just trying to digest what the prompt is asking you. And then why does knowing this matter? That's the way I rephrased why does this matter? Um, because once we can understand this, why does that matter that we know that? Okay, so let's tackle this in a brainstorm. Um, I have also cut and pasted the words of advice because I thought we might be able to use them for our brainstorm. So the first advice is to, is that you can address an issue that you wrote about in essay one. And then the second piece of advice is that you might consider whether that issue might be a cause or effect of another issue. Okay, so that's what I'm doing down here in my brainstorm. Um, issue I wrote about in my first essay. Well, let's just say my first example I'm going to use is poverty. Let's say that's the issue that you are going to write about or that you did write, write about. And now you're trying to think, can I think of ideas that would help me write this essay about poverty connected to something else. So what are potential causes of poverty? Um, so, um, okay. So what are some potential causes of poverty? Um, how about low wages? Um, how about, uh, lack, I'll say lack of jobs. 
Um, how about uh, discrimination? Because if you, whoops, discrimination. Because um, you can't, you know, some people won't get a job because they're being discriminated against and then they don't have money. Or they might not be promoted because they're discriminated against and then they don't have money. Um, what other things cause poverty? Um, being robbed, maybe? Um, let's see. Uh, I'm thinking lack of minimum wage. Oh, that's low wages, I guess. Um, how about inability to work? And what would cause someone to be unable to work? Let's see, illness, um, uh, disability. Let's see, um, so now that just made me think that poverty could be connected to a lack of health care because if somebody gets sick, they can't work and then they'll be poor. Um, let's see. Let's move on to potential effects. What are some potential effects of poverty? Um, well, one of the things we see in the story is that there's crime, um, robbery, right? Because people need to take things they don't have if they're desperate. Um, we also see depression. Um, and we might think also the depression could lead to drug addiction. Um, violence. And this seems connected to um, desperation. Um, let's see, unhealthy society. People have no good food or resources. Oops. Okay, so what am I seeing so far? I could connect poverty to discrimination or to low wages. Well, what causes a low wages and lack of jobs? Who controls wages? Um, so let's see, maybe um, government Oops, I keep smelling. Government not supporting workers. Um, and that could be corporate power, maybe. Um, in government. Um, let's see. Other potential connections. So poverty... What I'm seeing here, I could connect it with a lot of different things. Um, so what I'm looking for is what's surprising. What's surprising? Um, what other... So I think the most surprising thing for me right here might be um, that poverty can lead and be connected to drug addiction. That's a good idea that I could work with. Um, how does poverty lead to depression? Um, that's another interesting idea. Um, you know, we have a, we have in our world today a lot of depression and mental health issues. Could we connect depression to poverty and a lack of good jobs? Because that seems like that would work pretty well. Um, what about poverty and... Oops, poverty and a lack of health care. Um, is poverty related to health care access? That could be something else to explore. So now that I have these ideas, um, these could actually become part of what I would ask in a research question, my research question. So how is poverty, whoops, connected to depression. How is poverty connected to a lack of 
access to affordable health care. Okay, so these are actually things I might research. And that can help me think through these connections. Um, I could also think of other issues that might connect. You know, I, don't, I, I could, but I think right now, let's just do another example. Um, let's do the example of violence. Um, let's think about um, causes. Whoops. What are some causes of violence um, in the novel? Let's think specifically about the novel. Um, <clears throat> so robbery is a huge one. Um, so we see poverty is connected to violence. Um, what else causes violence? Anger. Why are people angry? Um, maybe lack of resources. History of trauma. I mean, that's one of the reasons Keith is angry. Um, lack of resources, history of trauma, um, maybe drugs. Okay, so this is interesting because now I'm seeing some connections with violence and drugs or violence and trauma. Um, that's, that's actually the, the idea so far that stands out to me that I'm interested in. Um, so, uh, let's think about, uh, other causes of violence. Um, what about, um, well, why is Lauren's father violent, for instance? Um, maybe a belief in, uh, authority of parents, um, authoritarian, authoritarian beliefs. So how is violence associated with authoritarian beliefs? Um, let's look at consequences because um, uh, I, I, we're kind of running out of time here in my video um, and I want to make sure I cover a few of these uh, examples. So consequences of violence. Well, what are the consequences of violence for Keith? It separates and estranges families. Um, it, and that actually can lead to increases in gangs, right? Um, what else does violence do? It, um, perpetuates violence, right? So trauma leads to trauma. Um, it also, um, let's see, uh, well, it, it kills people. So it, um, makes community or makes it hard to sustain a community. Um, so let's see, I mean, I'm, as I'm brainstorming, I'm going to choose the idea that I think is most interesting to me, which at this point is history of trauma. And I'm going to say, how is violent behavior related to a history of trauma. And that's going to be my research question um, for this example. Okay, so the key is what we're doing here is we are just brainstorming, right? We're brainstorming causes and effects um, by taking one issue and thinking about how it might connect with various potential causes and effects, um, which are other issues. And we did poverty and we did violence, but there's a lot of other issues we can start thinking about. Okay, so this is what I want you to start doing, is figuring out what are some potential things that I might talk about um, and how can I brainstorm some causes and consequences until I find something that I think is interesting? Um, and then we're going to take those interesting questions and we are going to research them. Okay. So that's going to be our next, oops, I'm trying to highlight this. That's going to be our next step is researching.